In this lesson, we'll be solving systems of linear equations in two variables using algebraic methods. There are two main algebraic methods. The first of them is called substitution method. How does it work? Let's say we want to solve this system of equations. The first step would be to solve one of those equations for one of the variables, whichever is easier. So that's up to us which variable we'll choose to solve for. The idea is to choose the variable that has the simplest coefficient. For example, if there is a variable with coefficient 1, that's the best choice. If not, if, for example, we have a choice between 3 and 2, 2 would be simpler, because those coefficients sooner or later become denominators. So it's easier to play with denominator 2 than denominator 3 or 5. Okay, therefore, in this example, I would choose to solve the first equation for y. Okay, we have y equals, bring the 5x to the right, so it will be negative 5x plus 7. We are going to refer to this equation as to substitution equation. So the expression negative 5x plus 7, that's our substitution expression that we are going to plug in to the other equation. So if the substitution equation was obtained from first equation, then we plug in to the second equation. Okay, so instead of y, we are going to write negative 5x plus 7. So we have 3x minus 2 times, and here in the bracket we'll plug in the substitution expression. Finish the equation, so it equals 25. Observe that after this step we obtain an equation with one variable only, so it's possible to solve for this variable. That's our third step, solve the resulting equation. Ok, so we open the bracket, distribute the negative 2, so it's 2 negatives makes it positive, 10x, and negative 2 times positive 7 is negative 14, equals 25. Now, let's collect like terms. We'll obtain 13x and then bring the 14 to the other side. So we are really adding 14 to 25, leaving us with 39. Finally, divide by 13 and we end up with the value for x, 39 over 13, which is 3. OK, so we have half a question done already. We have the value of x. The next step would be to use this value and plug in to the substitution equation from step 1. OK, so we take the 3, we plug in to this equation to find out what's y. y would be negative 5 times, instead of x we have 3, plus 7. So it's negative 15 plus 7, it becomes negative 8. Great, so we have both values, the x and y value, so the last step would be to state the answer to the question in the ordered pair form, x and y. Our answer is an ordered pair 3, negative 8 is the solution of our system of equations. So again, substitution method calls for replacing one of the variables by the expression in terms of the other variable in order to obtain equation in one variable so we will be able to solve. As soon as we have one of those variables, plug in to the substitution equation and find out the second variable. Let's try to solve another system of equations, still by substitution. However, this time the difficulty is that we have lots of fractions. Since we usually don't like to work with fractions, the best idea would be to clear the fractions by multiplying each equation by LCD. So, in our case, to clear the fractions in the first equation, I would multiply the equation by 4, because 4 is the lowest common denominator for 2 and 4. And to clear fractions in the second equation, let's multiply everything by 10. OK, so our new system of equations will be 4 divided by 2 is 2 times x, plus 4 divided by 4 is just 1, so it's 1y, equals 4 times 1 half is 2. And the bottom equation, 
10 times 1 tenths, it will disappear, so we'll have just x, minus 10 divided by 5 is 2 times 3 will give us 6y, equals 10 divided by 5 again, it's 2 times 2, altogether 4. Okay, so we brought this example to the same case as the previous example from the last slide. What do we do now? Remember, the substitution works by solving one of the equations for one of the variables, whichever we like, and then substituting the resulting expression to the other equation. Just for change, in this example I will solve the second equation for x. So, from second equation I will get x equals, bring the negative 6y to the other side, it becomes positive 6y plus 4. So that will be our substitution expression that we are going to plug in to the first equation instead of x. So, let's rewrite the first equation two times. Instead of x we have 6y plus 4 plus y equals 2. Okay, so we obtain an equation in one variable. It's easy to solve for y. Let's do it. Multiply the bracket by 2, so we have 12y plus 8 and plus y equals 2. Let's collect like terms. All together will be 13y on this side and 2 minus 8 is negative 6. So after division by 13, we obtain y equals negative 6 thirteenths, which is not very pretty number, but that's okay. That's quite common that the solutions to system of equations may be fractional. So let's follow the other steps from the previous example. We have already value for y. What we need to do is to go back to the substitution equation and find out the value for x. Okay, so x equals 6 times y, but y is negative 6 thirteenths. Let's place this in a bracket and then plus 4. When we multiply 6 times negative 6 thirteenths, first of all the product is negative, and then we multiply numerator by numerator, so we have 36 over thirteenths. And then we need to add 4. But since addition of fractions requires the same denominator, let's write the 4 in the numerator and rename the 4 to a number that will have denominator 13s. So if we put 13s in the denominator, we have to do the same to the numerator. Okay, therefore after all we have how many 13s? Negative 36 from this fraction and here's plus 4 times 13, that's 52. So it's plus 52. Final step, let's subtract 52 minus 36. It is 16. 16 thirteens, that's the final answer for the x. And we are ready to give the overall answer to the system of equations. So x is 16 thirteens and the y is negative 6 thirteens. As I said before, don't be alerted if you end up with ugly fractional answers. That's okay. Now let's talk about the second algebraic method, elimination method. How does this work? The idea is to eliminate x or y, eliminate one of the variables. How can we do that? If we look at this system of equations, we can observe something special about it. Particularly, the term 2y in one equation is added, in the other is subtracted. So, hmm, what will happen if we add side by side these two equations? Well, these two terms are exactly opposite, so they will cancel each other. And we add the remaining terms, so 8x plus 5x is 13x. On the other side, we have negative 18 plus 5, so it's negative 13. Oh, that makes it a lot easier. This equation involved only one variable, very easy to solve for x. It was enough to divide by 13. So negative 13 divided by 13 is just negative 1. Beautiful answer for x. Okay, so we've done the second step. We already solved the resulting equation. Now we go back and use this value 
in one of the original equations. Doesn't matter which one, so it's up to us. Let's say I will choose the first equation. So we have 8 times x, but the x is negative 1. And follow the rest of the equation. Minus 2 times y equals 5. Now we are solving for the other variable. So we could move this negative 2y to the right hand side of the equation, leaving it with 2y, and bring the 5 to the left side, so it will be negative 5. However, we stay with negative 8 as it was. OK, so we have 2y equals negative 13. Therefore, y by itself, after division by 2, is negative 13 over 2. So yes, we've got both values. What's left to do is to state the answer in an ordered pair form. OK, our solution is negative 1 and negative 13 halves. Wonderful. However, not every system of equations will be so friendly. What I mean is, not every system of equations will have prepared for us the opposite coefficients by the same variable. So when we add it, they can cancel. Let's see some other systems. This time, we don't have the opposite coefficients by neither of the variables. It's not by x, it's not by y. However, we can make them opposite. Because remember, we can always change equation by multiplying both sides by any number that we wish, except for 0. So the goal is to end up with opposite coefficients. Choose a variable. Let's say if I would choose a variable y, I would like to multiply the top equation by 5 and the bottom equation by 3. So the coefficients by the variable will be opposite. OK, therefore we multiply the top by 5 and the bottom equation by 3. Let's see what will happen. 5 times 2x is 10x plus 3 times 5 is 15y equals, don't forget to multiply the last number as well, 5 times 1 is 5. The bottom equation is 9x minus 15y equals negative 4 times 3, negative 12. So that's our new equivalent system of equations. Let's solve this one. As soon as we have those opposite coefficients, we know that they will cancel when we add the equations side by side. Follow the procedure, add side by side, so the y term is gone, and we end up with 19x equals negative 12 plus 5 is negative 7. Again, ugly numbers, but that's okay. This is a lot simpler than substitution in this case. So to obtain x, let's divide by 19, and we have x equals negative 7 nineteenths. Well, next we take the value for x and plug into one of the original equations. Doesn't matter which one. So let's choose the first one. OK, we have 2 times x, which is negative 7 nineteenths, plus 3 times y equals 1. Let's multiply by 2. We have negative 14 nineteenths plus 3y equals 1. Therefore, 3y equals 1 plus 14 nineteenths. But since I predict that I'm going to add these two numbers, it's a good idea to convert 1 into 19 nineteenths to get the same denominator, plus 14 nineteenths. So the 3y would be equal to 19 plus 14 is 33 nineteenths. And finally, we divide the whole equation by 3. Therefore, y would be equal 33 over 3 times 19. Since we divide this fraction by 3, the 3 will go to the denominator. And now we are ready to reduce the 3 with 33, leaving us 11 in the numerator. Therefore, the final answer is 11 nineteenths for y. And we can give the answer for the entire system of equations. The x is negative 7 nineteenths, and the y is 11 nineteenths. Notice that this type of unpleasant fractional answers 
we wouldn't be able to obtain just by graphing. From graphical method, we could only approximate our answers. For the exact values, we need to use algebra. OK, so we experienced already the two methods, substitution and elimination. Now, let's look at some special cases. What I mean by special cases, you will see after I try to solve this system of equations. OK, let's observe what we have first. If we wish to eliminate, for example, y, it would be good to either multiply the top equation by negative 2 to obtain positive 6 here, opposite to negative 6, or we could also divide the bottom equation by negative 2 as well. This idea of division came to my mind just because I noticed that all coefficients in the second equation are even. So we could make the coefficients a little bit smaller. Rather than multiply the top, we could divide the bottom. I wouldn't do that if one of those numbers would be, for example, odd. But here we could divide by negative 2. Well, let's do it. So the equivalent system would be copy the top equation and the bottom will be negative 4x plus 3y equals to negative 7. OK, now after adding those equations side by side, we get more than we expected because, yes, the 3y will cancel negative 3y, but even more, the x's will cancel as well. So we don't have any variable on this side. Nothing on this side really means 0, and the other side is 8 minus 7, so it's 1. Hmm, what does this mean? This is never true. 0 will never be equal to 1. So that means that there is no such pair of x and y values that would satisfy the whole system of equations. That really means that we have no solution. Solution set is an empty set and also means that we are dealing with two parallel lines. So we can say that such system of equations is inconsistent and also independent. Inconsistent because we don't have solution, independent because the lines are different. Let's try another case. Just for change, let's try to eliminate x this time. Again, we could multiply the first equation by 4 to obtain opposite to negative 8, or we could divide the second equation by 4 as well. I go by division because, as in the previous example, I prefer to keep my coefficients as low as possible. But we could as well multiply the top by 4, it will work the same way. OK, let's see what will be the equivalent system. Let's copy the first equation, 2x plus y equals 6, and the second equation is negative 2x, negative 4 divided by 4 is negative y, and negative 24 divided by 4 is negative 6. So now after adding side by side, the x's will be eliminated, but also y's would be eliminated. So again, the left hand side is 0, so that's very similar to the previous case. However, the right hand side, after adding 6 and negative 6, we also have 0. So 0 equals 0, oh, this time it's always true. That means no matter what the value for x and y can be, the system of equations leads us to the identity, to the statement that is always true. It does not depend on x and y at all. OK, therefore, in this case, we have infinitely many solutions. As soon as x and y satisfy one of those equations, it will also satisfy the other one, because both of these equations actually represent the same line. So the solution set can be written as the set of ordered pairs x and y that will satisfy, for example, the first equation. And we know that the lines are the same, so it's one and the same line, infinitely many solutions. Every single point of one line is a solution to the whole system because it belongs to the second line as well. So let's summarize our findings. If both variables are eliminated in the process of solving a system of equations, 
then we have no solution, that's the first case, if the resulting equation is never true. And we have infinitely many solutions if the resulting equation is always true, like in the second example. And finally, we'll have one application problem. Refer to the graph to answer the following questions. For how many years would the monthly payment be more for the fixed rate mortgage than for the variable rate mortgage, using the information on the displayed graph? Let's see what do we have here. The horizontal axis refers to the years of mortgage. The vertical axis refers to the monthly payment in dollars. And we have two graphs. If we buy a mortgage with the fixed rate, we will always pay $650 per month. The monthly payment will never change. However, if we buy the mortgage with the variable rate, well, the variable rate may change and in this particular case it's growing constantly. It's displayed as a linear function with certain slope. So originally the monthly payment was $600 per month, but after let's say four years is higher, after eight years is higher and so on and so forth. For how many years would the monthly payment be more for the fixed rate? Fixed rate is the red one. When is it more? Well, from the starting point when we just bought the mortgage until this point. How many years? Since this is four, this is eight, that must be six, half away. So for the first six years, the red graph, the fixed mortgage, is above the variable mortgage, the blue line. So the answer will be for the first six years. The monthly payment of the fixed rate will be higher than the monthly payment of the variable rate. And then when would the payments be the same and what would those payments be? Well, that's easy to read from the graph. The payments will be the same when the two lines intersect each other. So that's our solution for this system of two equations. When would those payments be the same? Exactly six years after we bought the mortgage. So six years after the start of the mortgage. And what would those payments be? Hmm. This question is about coordinates of this point. It is six and how much would we pay? 650. So six years after the start, we will pay $650. No matter if the original mortgage was fixed or variable. Give an ordered pair of the form year and payment to represent this situation. So the ordered pair that represents the situation is six years after and $650 payment.